In this video, we want to consider problem number four. These two problems are same. Fourth problem of USAMO and fifth problem of USAJMO for both of them are for 2022. Okay, so let's read the problem. We want to analyze this. Find all pairs of primes PQ for which P minus Q and PQ minus Q are both perfect squares. Pause the video and try first for yourself. Let's write P minus Q is X squared. PQ minus Q is Y squared. So look here, um, we write all things that may be be useful. Why? Because at first, in the beginning of the solution, when you want to try a problem, you don't know which results are useful, which are not. So write all of them. For example, you reach eight results. At the end, you will understand five of them are important and useful. Three of them are useless. Okay, so let's start. From second equation, we know Q, Q times P minus one equal to Y squared. So P minus 1 should be Q times Z squared because Q is prime. So here we should have Q and then it is Q squared. And here it should be Z squared because Q squared times something should be Y squared. So it is Z squared. This is the point that when you see, for example, Q times something is perfect squared, that term is Q times Z squared. So we conclude P minus 1 is Q z squared or we can write p equal to q z squared plus one so we number this and let me tell you something when you write all results that you reach and uh, at the end of the for example time of exam if you can't reach the solution you can write all of them but it is not needed to write the proof completely uh, because it takes time write the proofs of the things you reached quickly and you take the marks of each of them that are useful in the solution of the problem. Okay, now in next step, we will see, okay, we have Q here, negative Q, negative Q. So if we subtract second one minus first one, we have PQ minus P equal to Y squared minus X squared. And then we can say left hand side, if you factor from P, it will be P times Q minus one equal to y minus x, y plus x. Now, y minus x, y plus x, both of them are even or odd. Why? Because look, the reason is y minus x and y plus x have common parity or both, we can say parity means odd or even. Uh, both of them are even or both of them odd. The reason is what? Because look, y minus x, we want to say is congruent to y plus x mod 2. Because it is equivalent that negative x is congruent to plus x mod 2. And if you add x to both sides, it will be 2x mod 2. Mod means the remainder when divided by 2. So we will see this one is correct because 2x is even. It is 0 mod 2. The remainder is 0. So it's correct. It is correct. So both of them are even. Both of them are odd. If both of them be odd so we understand q minus 1 is odd so q has to be 2. So here we say case 1 suppose y minus x y minus x and y plus x are odd. So q has to be 2 and p is greater than or equal 3 because this times this odd q minus 1 odd the only possible case is q2 and p has to be odd. Because Q is 2, we can say, let's consider first equations. Let me consider it is 2, it is 3. From 2, we can conclude P minus 2 is X squared. From 3, we can conclude 2P minus 2 is Y squared. Okay, so here we can say it is 2P minus 2. Here we can say p is x squared plus 2, if we take negative 2 to right hand side. And if we replace p with x squared plus 2, it will be 2 times x squared plus 2, minus 2 equal to y squared. We can do something here, let's subtract, okay? 
this soft track it will be better. Left side will be p, right side will be y squared minus x squared. And it will be y minus x plus y plus x. And look, we can say something here. We can say with a loss of generality, suppose that p, x, and y are greater than or equal to 0. Okay? And because they are greater than or equal to 0, we can say this part is greater than or equal to this part. So uh, y plus x is at least 0 because y and x are at least 0, but it cannot be equal to 0 because if it is 0, then the product is 0, p is 0, contradiction. So the only possible case it is p, it is 1. So we can write that y minus x is 1, y plus x is p, and we can say that, for example, if we subtract, left side is 2x, right side is p minus 1, so x is p minus 1 over 2. So if we use 2, so by 2 we can say p minus 2 equal to p minus 1 over 2 whole squared. And now let's multiply it by 4. 4 times p minus 2 equal to p minus 1 squared. So 4p minus 8 equal to p squared minus 2p plus 1. And then if you take all things to the right hand side, p squared minus 6p plus 9 equal to 0. It is p minus 3 squared, so p equal to 3. Now uh, let's check the two main equations of the problem. 3 minus 2 is 1 squared. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2 is 4, 2 squared. So one answer in this case is Q2 and P equal to 3. So it is first answer. Case 1 was finished. Now let's check uh, the other case that X y minus X, Y plus X are even numbers. Okay, so let's write case 2. So let's copy paste. So in the, in this case, it is even, it is even. So right side is multiple of 4. Okay, so 4 divides right side. Now, because 4 divides right side, so for your 4 divides also left side, 4 divides p times q minus 1. Now it is important that p is 2 or not. Because if p is not 2, q minus 1 should be multiple of 4. So case 2, 1, p is even, p is 2. So if p is 2, we know p minus q should be perfect squared. So the only possible case when p is 2 is q also should be 2. And because then it is 0 squared, then this one will be 4 minus 2, it is not perfect squared. So we've reached contradiction for this case. In the exam, you should write the thing I've told you. Case 2, 2 is p is at least 3. And because 4 divides p times q minus 1, we can ignore p and we call this lemma Euclid's lemma. Euclid's lemma is what? If something, if something like 4 divides p times q minus 1 and GCD or HCF of 4 and p equal to 1, then we can say 4 divides q minus 1. So we can say q equal to q minus 1 is 4k. So q equal to 4k plus 1. Now if we consider p times q minus 1, we will be p times 4k. p times or 4pk equal to y minus x times y plus x. Now, because we know that from the problem, from second thing from two equation of the problem p minus q is x squared and from second one p q minus q is y squared and p is greater than equal q also p cannot be equal to q why let's see because if p equal to q it will be this one p squared minus p it will be p times p minus one okay if p equal to q and p times p minus 1 is y squared. And because they are relatively prime p and p minus 1, both of them should be perfect squared. p should be y1 squared. p minus 1 also should be y2 squared. It is a lemma. Important thing in many exams useful. 
when product of two consecutive numbers is perfect square, each of them uh, is perfect square by this contradiction because p is prime, it's not perfect square. So p cannot be equal to q, so it is greater than equal 1. So we conclude p is strictly greater than q. And because p is strictly greater than q and x is at least 1, we can say, and we said y and x are greater than or equal 0. Mm, here we can say, we said with our loss of general t, we can say x and y are positive because x is not 0, y also is not 0 because pq is greater than q. So they are positive. We conclude y plus x is greater than y minus x. Now, p cannot be this. Why? Because if you have p here, p times something. All, if we consider all other terms here, 4k, 4k is what? q minus 1. Okay, so we know what? We know p is greater than q. So p is also greater than q minus 1. So this term is greater than this term. Contradiction. So p cannot divide this. So we should have p here. So the possible cases, because both of them are even, so we have 2pk. And here, let's see. Look, we have 2p, but maybe k is not prime necessarily. K is for example, we can divide k to two parts. So it is 2p, for example, times r, and here s, which r s equal to, it is 2s, which r s equal to k, or, okay, and we can say r s, okay, only one case. We have 2s, 2p r. So if we write y minus x is 2s, y plus x is 2pr, which rs is k, and q is 4k plus 1. Now let's analyze the things we have. We know x squared is p minus q, and we said q is 4k, which k is rs, so it's p minus 4k minus 1 which is p minus 4 or s minus 1. Now here, by these two equations, we can find x is what? How? Let me move it here. If you subtract 2x, will be 2pr minus 2s. So x will be pr minus s. Now we will see, okay, PR is greater than this and minus S is less than this. So we can say it's PR because the positive part is greater, the minimum part is smaller. And it is what? It is X. So X squared is less than X. So we conclude what we know X squared here, we said is at least 1. So we can say it is greater than equal. It is we know it is equal to x times x, which is greater than equal because x is greater than equal what? This x times one x. So x is less than x, and we reach contradiction for this part. So our only answer for this problem is q two p three. Let me tell you a homework from UK BMO round two. That the idea is same as this problem, similar. It is BMO round 2, 2017 2018, third problem. So try to solve this problem. You can comment your answers right below this video, or you can, if you had questions, you can feel free to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Also, if you want to learn another ideas that background ideas and important formulas in geometry that you should memorize if you want to learn them as i said before feel free to send message to my whatsapp number in the description and comments okay thanks for watching this video see you next time bye